the Noam Sub Technology in Chicago. And my four years in college, I used to build my startup, become a CEO, an entrepreneur, and thereafter, you know, did a lot of things that you heard in my introduction. Now, all of this has a very specific foundation. An extraordinary life requires an extraordinary lifestyle, an extraordinary mindset. So today's topic is very, very relevant because today's topic is about habit formation, the power of good habits. And uh, I'm very happy my mother is here because she has a lot of role to play. I've been a Bengali mother uh, to, to train me and make sure uh, that I had some good habits growing up. And, and that's a very, very important foundation for which I'm able to do what I'm able to do. How many of you don't understand Bengali? Don't understand Bengali? Okay. Okay, fun. Let's stick to my English. My Hindi is terrible. It's a combination of Hindi. Uh, but, uh, okay. If I say something you don't understand, raise your hand and I'll be happy to explain. So, uh, when I started my startup, it was with my friends. Smart people who are bright and, and I thought, okay, let's build things together. As we got success, we started getting awards and everything else. Our team started growing and growing and growing and eventually this was our last semester in college when we were ready to launch our business. Very amazing, right? How many of you want to be a CEO? A lot of you. A lot of you. That's fantastic. So this will be very relevant to you because I have always been a CEO. How awesome is that? Right? From the age of 19, I have been a CEO until the date I continue to be in multiple other companies. Of course, companies change, but the person is still the same. So once we graduated, I was able to get a very amazing team on board. The, ex, the chief technology officer of Motorola, and this was a Motorola was big. The head of marketing from L'Oreal. The head of VP uh, of Innovations from Wrigley. These are people who had multi multi million dollars the beach house the ferrari the dream life that you dream of they had all of that and the two of us myself and edward we had nothing we were students but they left everything to join us any idea why no no it's a lot of you so i'll not make it so interactive so Something that lacks in people's life is fulfillment. They have money, but you cannot eat money. You cannot enjoy money unless you spend it or something. You can have success, but there's always something that's lacking behind it. What is there that is lacking in their lives was that they were a small piece in a large organization. They couldn't see how they were affecting other people's lives. Happiness comes when we are able to make others happy. And that's why they joined the two of us who are college students because we had something that they could do. We were happy and we are pursuing our dream. And that's why these people joined. And together we have been able to build all these different businesses in US, Canada, Hong Kong, uh, India and Vietnam. And when you do something at an early age, which I hope each one of you do, how many of you are below 18? Below 18? Okay, well. Uh, fantastic. I started at 19. I wish I started earlier. So you have all the technology available to you for free. And all of this glorification comes to you when you do things at an early age. Because people expect people to do things at 15, 14. As a young student, when you pursue a dream, when everybody else says, Korishna, Havina, Parvina, you're not born in the family of Amanis and Tatas, here you are pursuing your dream, then you get on the news. You become a phenomenon. And I'm very fortunate that that has been the case with me. We'll start with the mind. We all have a mind ego. What is in this mind? Anybody knows? Thoughts, okay. Beliefs, okay. No mind reader, you see. Thoughts, desires, dreams, okay. Emotions, habits. A lot of the things we do every day is out of habit. Do you realize that? Certain kinds of movies we like to watch, certain kind of ways we wear a tie, certain kind of ways we polish our shoes. There are habits in every aspect of our life. And that is pre-programmed. 
We don't even think, we just do it. Right? That's the habit. And we're going to talk a lot about habits today. You know the story of this horse? Yes. This horse was a baby horse. And it was tied to a stump. And it was not fed. The horse got weak. It tried to run away. It tried to run away, but it couldn't run away. And eventually the horse gave up. It was habituated to be tied up. It was habituated to not running away. And so when it grew up, you see the blue chair? Exactly the same blue chair you're sitting on. That massive horse is tied to. And it feels it cannot run away. That's habit. There's good habit and there's bad habit. So we'll talk about both. And how that affects us and how we can have the good habits that make us who we want to become. Bhagavad Gita is the foundation of my life. So I will quote a little bit of Bhagavad Gita. I hope that's okay with you. And I'll make it very relevant for you so you understand what is being spoken here. So a little bit about Bhagavad Gita. This is a book uh, that is compiled by somebody called Vyasthi who compiled all the Vedic literatures. And this is a capture of the conversation between Krishna, who is God, and Arjun, his best friend. On a battlefield, imagine night before your exam, somebody is giving you a it's exactly that. About to have a war. 600 million people. America has only 300 million people. There's 300 million on each side of the battlefield. In Kurukshetra, near in Haryana, right? The place is still there. And Arjun is like, holy shit, I do not want to fight this war. I am running away. We have that sometimes, right? Our Tovich. For it you know, it's like, oh my god. Exam tomorrow, I'm not prepared. I am not in the exam. In fact, I don't know how many of you watched my first TED talk. That's what happened. It was in Chicago. I was supposed to give a TED talk. And this is not like today TEDx has become like everybody does it. But this was the time when even the audience was like selected who would attend. And I was like, I am so not ready. And I told them specifically, don't give me a slot after lunch because lunch is for to come by. So it's like, don't give me a slot after lunch. And they gave me the slot after lunch. And then I'm going for lunch, not coming back, not doing the TED talk. Because people before me were amazing. And I was like, I'm not qualified to give a TED talk. And my best friend, I talked to him, he's like, brother, you cannot do that. You need to speak. I asked my mentor, he said, fellow, just put yourself out of the center, put Krishna in the center, and do it at a service to God. Like, Fine. And, and whatever I did, it was amazing. So much, so much has happened after that TED talk. So here in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, for whom he has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. But for one who has failed to do so, his mind remains the greatest enemy. And the habits are situated in the mind. And raise my billionth one. I don't know yet. Maybe it will be a billion dollar business or not. But that value doesn't make me. But what I am talking about is the goal is stretching yourself beyond your means. Even if I raise 500 million, I'm happy. It's much more than what I have today. Right? But if I'm not thinking big enough, if I'm not making those extra steps, what am I doing? Living an average life? My grandmother passed away in 2015 and I was at the uh, crematorium for the first time, Shamshan. And I saw so many dead bodies coming. And it's like cats and dogs. This person used to be a living, charming personality and now they are on this little bed that is made of wood and they will be burnt shortly. My grandmother didn't die like that. I was there and I had a lot of people doing a lot of wonderful rituals and it was very, very lavish for her. I made sure she left like a queen. And I want to make sure that I do too. When I die, a few people cry. That's you know, people should say that, yes, this guy transformed so many lives. That's my uh, epitaph, you can call it. In fact, when I was in first year in college, they had us write our own uh, death, uh, what do you call that? Geology. It's called geology. And think from third person and write down what you would like to talk about yourself when you're dead. Right? In Christianity, in Hinduism, we don't do that so much. But we should. And I... Okay, as an as a 18 year old your age, I was thinking, what would I want people to remember about me? And it was a very deep rooted thought that when I'm dying, what kind of legacy do I want to leave behind? What kind of impact do I want to leave on this earth? And you should think like that as well. And build your dream, build your goal, and stretch yourself, take massive actions. 
get massive results and make your country proud, make your parents proud, make yourself proud. The other way also works. When you think, oh, I'm nobody. I'm not a like Jehovah now. I cannot do much. You see your potential is not much. You don't take massive actions, you're like, oh, let me try it. See, it didn't work. I knew I was a loser. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You can be crazy like me, or you can be crazy like somebody who just had given up on life. Either way, you'll be proven right. So it's your choice, what you want to do. What you do in your 20s, decide the rest of your life. Whatever actions you perform in your 20s. It's not like, Acha, once I get married, then I'll do something. Once I have to say that they have at least once seriously thought about committing suicide. That's not a joke. I'm sure that's true in India too. I'm not trying to scare you, your first year, but it gets difficult. And when it gets difficult, that, this will help you. You pause, you recognize there's a problem, and you reflect. You think, what are my options? Generally, why people want to kill themselves? Because they think, oh, I have no options, it's too embarrassing, I cannot see my parents, I have done something so bad, or no, all the doors are closed. It's generally not the case. When you're stressed, what happens is your brain cannot think. And you have no idea how to, you know, uh, I'll, I'll make it relevant for you. Have you had those exams where you're like almost guaranteed you're going to fail? And you go take the exam completely stress-free and you come out with good grades? Right? Why? Because you're free. You're already given up. You're not going to do anything well. That's when your brain is functioning. And you know more than you realize. You go to the exam hall and you realize, shit, I know so much more than I thought. And you actually end up getting good grades and coming out. Life is like that. When you're too stressed out, you're not able to think anything. Everything is closed, everything is over. But when you actually give it a pause, listen to I do this. When I'm going through some difficult situations, I listen to music and I start dancing. And actually start dancing around and feel good and get my dopamine running. And when I do that, I realize, oh my god, there is this option and that option. All the creativity starts going. And I'm able to solve my problem, talk to friends, solve my problem, move on with life. There's always a solution. And if you don't have a solution, just give me a message. I'll respond in 24 hours. So, <laughs> what problem you're facing? Anybody knows this guy? Rich Dad Poor Dad? Right. Many people are not successful because they fail to fail a number of times. They let fear hold them back. Imagine when you were learning to walk and your parents said, Oh, wait, you fell down. Sorry, you cannot walk for the rest of your life. No! Parents hold us up. Tell us try again, try again, try again. Driving, walking, everything, computers. There was a time we didn't know, we try, 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 and it happens. Life is like that. Success doesn't come like instantly overnight. You're sitting in a room full of cube lights. Who's the guy who invented the uh, light bulbs? Thomas Edison. My name, Avello, actually is inspired by the middle name of Thomas Edison. Thomas Alva Edison, Alva Pita Avello. Right? And Thomas Edison, you know how many times they fail to make the perfect light bulb? They said 10,000 times, not that he counted, but a lot of times he failed before he was able to get the right light bulb. So life is like that. You try, try, try. Unless you give up, you don't fail. Those are temporary failures. So rectify. When you realize, okay, I've thought through, I've made a mistake, everybody makes mistakes. Rectify. Hit yourself in the head. Okay, don't repeat this mistake. Done it once, left never repeat it. You build, you learn, you go through. This is actually something you use for startups. You build, test, learn, right? iPhone, when they came out, they get feedback. Oh, the antenna's not working. I think iPhone 5. They rectified it with a cover. So life is also like that. You realize you make some mistake, you fail fast, you succeed faster. And then you reinstate back. I'm going to tell you a nice story. I meet this lady, she's maybe in her 60s now, but when she was a teenager, she was a beautiful ballet dancer. And she had some car accident where she ended up in a hospital, woke up, and when she opened her eyes, she realized one of her legs was missing. It was the most horrific time of her life. You know this story? Some of you do. So, uh, her parents were there and they were trying to console her. She almost instantly made a decision that she would go for Paralympics 
some sports. She figured out eventually she wants to do skiing. So the day actually happened. She was there at the Paralympic. Paralympics is Olympics for Paral uh, uh, specially able people. So uh, she was there, first round, zoom, 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 zoom. She did very well. Everybody's like, she's going to win. Final round, she was going zoom, 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 zoom. Somebody hit her. She fell. She crashed. And she said, why me? I was supposed to win. Why me? But then she didn't walk herself up. She kept going. She got the bronze medal. And years later, she's relating the story and telling us that, you know, those few seconds when I asked myself, why me? How could this happen to me? It cost me the gold medal. I could have gotten the gold medal if I got up and kept going. Life is like that. You reinstate back. Okay, you went through a breakup. Give yourself seven days. Cry as much as you want. You should cry. Express emotions. Right? But don't make it like six months and fail all your exams. That's stupid. Quickly, get back in action and keep going. Life is not going to wait for you. Bounce back quickly. That's a very important thing about success. See, to reach success, huh, I'll give you another story. Picasso. Picasso, you know Picasso? Famous painter. Picasso was in a marketplace and this lady came up to him and said, Picasso, can you make me a sketch of a bird? Picasso said, sure. In 10 seconds he made a sketch. She said, how much for that? He said, something like $10,000. $10,000 for 10 seconds? And Picasso said, 10 seconds is what you see. The 40 years and the 40 nights, the 40 years of you know, sleepless nights before that, that went into building this 10 second skill is not what you see. That's what I'm charging you for. So when you reach success, people only see the success part. They forget to see all the failures that they went through, the struggles that they went through. And this is about that. When you go through those struggles, fight back, bounce back, quickly get back in action, or else you're losing time. You got into some bad habits, fine, get help, get out, and get back in, you know, progressive life. Here are the four principles, remember these. Recognize, reflect, rectify, reinstate. Anytime you go through issues, whether it's anger or addictions or stress, recognize, reflect, rectify, reinstate back in action. We'll talk a little bit more. We are conscious beings, right? And everything depends on how we see the world. The conscious person that you are. See the life through filters. For example, uh, if I put a filter, a red filter on top of this uh, projector, you'll see everything red. So similarly, how we think who we are. Whether you think you're rich, you're good looking, you're tall, you're short, you're a man, you're a woman. All of these filters lead to what action you take. And what action you take leads to what reaction you get. You can stop it. You hit the wall, you get bruised knuckles. You slap somebody, you can slap back. Or law of karma. You do something today, you get something tomorrow. So how you see the world defines how you act and what comes back to you. So it's very important to understand who you really are. For me, I have a very, very high confidence. I'm a short guy with very average intelligence. I'm not special. Trust me when I say it. And we all know how that goes. So don't do that. Don't try to change everything all at once. Do small changes. You want to wake up a little early? Half an hour. Change your sleeping pattern. You want to be a little thin? Lose, you know, reduce a little bit of quantity of food that you eat every day. Or eat healthier food. Or go to the gym maybe 5 minutes first. The next week 15 minutes. Then next week. So gradual changes. Right? Little by little, you will see that's more effective, more sustainable. It takes 21 days to form a habit. Did you know that? If you do something for 21 days, you will be habituated. Now, that is only for good habits. There are certain habits you don't need any time. You try it, gone. I'm sure you know what those habits are. See, I'm not here to tell you, judge you, this is good, this is bad. I'm not here to tell you that. You are all adults, mostly. Some of you are maybe under 18. But this is the time. Welcome to adulthood. Nobody's going to tell you what to do. You're free now. You're in college. And you can do whatever you want. And when I say whatever, it's whatever. You're in capital. And if you choose to take the right steps, 
and make your life where you are flying private jets or you can choose to live a life where you are taking injections for the rest of your life. I hope it's not the second one. And that's why I'm here today. You know this guys? Yes. yes. The Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and uh, the guy in the middle who fired Steve Jobs, uh, Jim Scott. <laughs> the people who you always notice, right? Movie stars marrying uh, cricketers, or doctors marrying doctors. Your friend circle is people that you are very similar to. And so there's a theory that I really believe. If you hang out with five confident people, you will be the sixth. If you hang out with five millionaires, you will be the sixth. You hang out with five broke people, you will be the sixth. There was in Russia, there during Cold War, there were a few millionaires who were extremely rich and successful. Everything was taken away from them. Money, family, business, everything, gone. They were put in a prison in the middle of the ocean, in an island. And after the Cold War went away, Gorbachev let them free. And these guys went out and became millionaires again. Guess what? The one thing that couldn't be taken away from them was their habit, their thought process, their mindset. That's what I'm going to instill in you today. What this is going to tell you today. Right? So who you associate with is who you become. So choose your friends carefully. I'm not telling you to be snooty and snob. I'm not saying, oh, I'm cool and you're not. Please stay away. That's not what I'm talking about. But if your friends are the people who say, you suck, you are ugly. Oh, let's try this dope and let's do that. You know they are here to hurt themselves and hurt you. Might as well be polite and say, no, thank you. I will find a different set of friends. Because that's what matters. If Steve Jobs did not find Steve Jobs there, they would be your apple. Please know that. Right? Both of them. So you need to find friends who you want to become like. Bad habits are often quick to form. Uh, sorry, this uh, side track getting cut. The bad habits are quick, often quick to form but very hard to break. They don't take 21 days. You know, I have seen many of my friends, I had a factory friend in Chicago. You know, one day he walked in, we spoke, this huge tall Russian guy, six pack abs and everything. And we were talking, talking, and, and he opened up his heart. He said, Hello, I have some problems. I said, What problems? He said, I'm cryptomania. I like to steal. I said, Okay. I was non judgmental. Do you, do you have no problems? I'm like, No. Fine. You, have a, you like to steal. Okay, what else? Oh, I also have a drug problem. I hallucinate these things. I said, like, Okay. Fine. What else? And he went down with a list of things. He told me about sci fi stories that he sees, he believes in you know, aliens coming and abducting him and blah blah blah. I did not judge. And I went upstairs to my room. He said, Hello, you're leaving me with all these expensive things in your room. I am cryptomania. I said, I know, I trust you, Alex. And we became friends and we continued on our spiritual journey as well as a friendship journey. And eventually it took me almost six months to get him out of those habits and we did. He taught me how to swim. I couldn't swim to save my life. I had a swimming pool in my house, but I couldn't swim. You know, but this guy taught me how to swim because he's athletic. And I got him out of trucks and jumped to many other things. And now he's working for the Chicago Police Department. That's how I feel. From stealing to police, amazing story, right? Cool or killer? Again, not here to judge. If you are a smoker, I'm not here to judge. But know for a fact, look at those lungs. One is a healthy lung. The other one is what happens when you smoke. Really bad habit. My grandfather, in fact, was a chain smoker. And he died out of lung cancer. And that day onwards, I promised myself, if I see anybody smoking, at least I'll tell them, don't kill yourself. In my school, actually, I used to my teachers in the staff room, took out cigarette packets from their pocket and threw it away. It's like, I don't want you to smoke, I don't want to be dying like my grandfather. I'm telling you the same thing. Don't get into this habit. And if you do get in, don't try to get out. This is how the habits are formed. There's a science of habits. There's a trigger. Then comes behavior, then comes reward. 
I'll give you an example. You think it's cool to smoke because you see all these nice guys on, on movies or maybe a senior who you think is cool is smoking, right? Smoke to be cool. You're like, let me also try it and look cool. Wear sunglasses, smoking, Instagram story. Sure. You feel good. There are three reasons why you might do that. You try to fit in with the group. You want to be like everybody else in your group. Or you try to get attention, maybe from the opposite sex. Like, look at me, I'm so cool. You know, I'm modern. Uh, I'll tell you something about that. In the US, people hardly smoke. And those who smoke, it's not about smoking, but I'm just sharing with you. Those who smoke are really looked down upon. When I came back to India after 12 years, I'm looking at like everybody smoking around. I'm like, wow, it's like a fashion statement here. And then the US has become like, yeah, you smoke, I won't even date you. Right? On Tinder, if you say you're a smoker, you have very less chances in the US. <laughs> and the third option is trying to escape stress or find happiness. A lot of times we take up addiction, and addiction can be anything. It can be food, it can be video games, it can be anything. We take up addictions to find happiness. Maybe there's something wrong in my family, maybe you're going through a breakup, maybe you're going through financial stress. You're like, I want to get out of this stress, and this is my way of finding out. It might kill you, but yes, that's what the only option. You know, so that's why I'm going to tell you about other options that you might also have access to. But before that, we'll talk a little bit more about addictions. <laughs> Seafood is following the same pattern, the trigger, there's a trigger of I want to feel good or I'm stressed out. Many people get mad when they're stressed out. Right? It's because that's what's happening, the trigger, the behavior and the reward. The feel good thing. What basically happens is the brain is saying, well, that was really good, junk food. So next time you feel bad, eat and you will feel better. And instead of solving the problem, you're eating and getting into more problems. You're getting unhealthy. You're not fixing the problem, but you're escaping the problem. Ironically, in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjun wanted to escape as well. Arjun said, I'm going to go to the Himalayas and I'm going to beg. Krishna's like, no, you're not. And here I'll tell you the whole Bhagavad Gita. 45 minutes, Krishna spoke, Arjun was. This is like the oldest motivational talk you can imagine, right? Like TED Talk back in the days, then Bhagavad Gita. Krishna spoke, Arjun understood, he's like, now ready to fight. And we fight every day with our life, with our mind, with our boyfriends, girlfriends, parents, right? So the brain is, is old and is thinking, okay, wherever I can find happiness, let me make it happen. And when you're not thinking, what you're basically doing is, it's of fixing the problem, you find an addiction and you latch onto it. And it still has that trigger, behavior, and reward pattern. This is what's happening biologically. The frontal cortex, only humans have this, right? The frontal cortex goes to sleep when you're stressed. That's why when you're stressed, you will explode on people you love. You say terrible things to people you love. I do that all the time. My mother is sitting here, she knows. And with everybody else, I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, very nice, thank you very much. My mother, I'm honest, right? So she gets all the heat from all the stress that I didn't get. So, sorry, Bob, but you know now why. My frontal cortex is to be blamed for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, what happens is when you're not thinking, that means your, your censorship is not working. You shout at people, you do things, and also that's where the addiction comes in. You're like, Dhul, Bhagavad and life is bad, let me just take this and get an instant release. But what you're getting into is not solving the problem, but getting into a perpetual habit which grows and grows and grows and eventually it destroys you. You're getting dependent on something else. You're giving your life remote control in somebody else's hand. And that's why bad habits are bad. Again, I don't like to tell people, this is good, this is bad, and no one to judge. But I'm a little older than you, I've seen the world more than you. And if you want to succeed, and if you have a bad habit, it's like climbing the mountain with 20 kgs on your back. Right? Like you have good habits. So I'll go back to Bhagavad Gita. Here Krishna says something interesting. He says, O oh, son of Kunti, which is Arjuna, the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress and the disappearance of the course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. 
they arise from sense perception, perception or sign of body. So basically what Krishna is saying is this. Sine waves. You've seen this? Yes, sir. Sine waves. Happiness is stress. It's just how it's designed. There's happiness, next comes distress, next comes happiness, next comes distress. That's how life is. So if you're going through struggles, know that it's going to end. Happiness is going to come. I, I agree. So being a startup entrepreneur, I'm perpetually struggling. Perpetually building companies, going through problems, issues with everything that can go wrong, goes wrong in a startup. And there's something that inspired me from Winston Churchill. He said, when going through hell, just keep going. I really like it. When going through hell, just keep going. Don't get stuck. Don't stop and think, oh, why me? Why did this happen to me? Just keep going. Keep progressing. Keep moving forward. And eventually you will come to the cycle of happiness. Now, how do you put it into practice? Easy to say for me. You'll think like, oh, this guy has achieved this and that. Now he's giving gap to all of us. He doesn't understand what we are going through. Oh, trust me, I do. I have been in college, I've been an engineer, and I have had my struggles with almost everything you can imagine. Right? Not the startup, but personal life. I'm not going to talk about that in public here. But I have gone through that most people shouldn't have to go through. But Bhagavad Gita has been my foundation, which has helped me a lot. And practical application of this knowledge is what's going to make your break. There's hundreds of you here today. Very few of you might actually practically apply and see the results. So I urge you, please do. Here's a, a picture that depicts us. The horses, if you notice carefully, they have a pendant. It's basically representing the five senses. What are the five senses? Good. Biology 100 or 100. <laughs> uh, the five senses. And then the horses, the reins, the, the ropes with which the horses are pulled, that's the mind. And the person who's holding on the reins is intelligence. And at the back, that's you, the soul, the conscious being, experiencing all of this. So the Bhagavad Gita gives the example that the wheels of the chariot are like days and nights. Life is moving forward. And if your senses are all over the place, look at this, smell this, touch this. In the constant like, huh? 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 Right? If the horse is going five different directions, what happens? You go nowhere. But the chariot breaks down. If the horses are pulled by the intelligence, that means your mind is controlled by the intelligence, and you have a direction to go, then you get where you want to go. When I ask people, what is your goal in life? I get an answer, I want to be rich. I want to do good for people. I want to be kind. Look, what does that mean? How rich is rich? 10 crores? 100 crores? 1000 crores? What is good? What is nice? Be specific. Tell me what you want to do. Who you want to serve. What kind of car you want to drive. At what age do you want to make your first million dollar? Be specific. And when you have a specific goal, you can align your horses in that direction, in that specific goal, and get your intelligence, your mind, everything aligned in that direction. Only then you can achieve what you want to achieve. So when you are hit by confusion, dilemma, influence of others, you don't know what to do, hit the pause button. My mentor taught me this, hit the pause button. There's a lot of times in, in business world, and you will realize this also in, in your college, that things don't go as you planned. And you feel like lashing out on people, but then you burn relationships. It comes back to you. Even in your boyfriend-girlfriend relationships, you'll notice that. You just like say something terrible and it breaks up, right? So don't do that. Before that happens, learn to hit the pause button. That's where you're pulling the horses. Like hold on, hold on, before you react, hold on. You recognize there's a problem. Either you're angry, frustrated, there's stress, you recognize, you think. You reflect, that's when you're thinking through. What is the problem? What are the outcomes? What is the best thing? So here's the deal. In the US, 70% of